good afternoon, evening, night, or whatever time or day it is. This is AW Tech Guy here, and today we'll be taking a look at what is Z buffering and what is best practice when using ActiveBuild software. So let's just go ahead and, and, and jump right in it. Uh, I won't gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, there was a specific person actually uh, gave me the idea of doing such a performance t um, review today because he was told um, wrong information about the Actables engine and what it exactly does. Now he had made a giant um, space station underneath the water and he was told that a singular object would be uh, more taxing than uh, let's just say 2000 objects or in this case it will probably be more like 20,000 objects. Now the geometry in Actables, um, if it's just a simple cube, it's not gonna impact the performance of an old machine nearly as much than trying to render uh, multiple objects um, in this case and I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you as why as well but that's just simple facts let's just go ahead and, and first look at what Z buffering is because that will be the first part into understanding um, active builds and then the way it displays the objects so let's just first if you're in active builds and you're in a, uh, in, a in any world this will work in any world um, when you press the F10 button on your keyboard you'll see it will display um, where there's no objects displayed a green grid now this grid is basically the cell grid now if you want to know what the cell grid basically is it's, it's buildable land that has been indexed now if you've been working with Excel you will probably understand what uh, an array is because basically that's what you're doing here you're, you're placing an object on a coordinate uh, a specific coordinate and that coordinate is basically placed in a indexing yeah? like an array it indexes exactly where the object is and what the orientation of the object is on that grid so we'll, we're going to take a, a look at that further along but first let's explain what Z buffering is now I made a simple diagram in paint um, just to explain what Z buffering is now this is your depth field in this case so when you select an object you'll see right this is the X pointing towards the right hand side Z is your depth buffer and then Y is your uh, Y axis so that's basically your, your, your vertical uh, your vertical line there alright so when you talk about um, Z buffering what's basically happening is it's it's caching in the buffer multiple objects that have been placed in the same depth vector so when you would select this uh, object with the control enabled you will figure out that there is more than just one object here there's there's 169 objects in this specific spot now as you can tell the frames in this case because the pro program is being deselected do go down a little bit but if I were to delete this and let's just take a look at the previous frames uh, okay uh, 79 yeah around around that all right so let's just um, let's just delete this all of a sudden the frames go up because uh, even though it's not showing these additional objects they're still in the buffer basically being displayed so your browser still has to work to show these objects even though they're not being shown phys physically they are still there and therefore your browser is still working on hey you know I need to pl put a, need, a, need to put a uh, an object here I need to render that I need to render that I need to buffer that you know and it, it basically is a, a continuous loop of, of trying to display something and um, in this case it's not going to give you an added effect because the object is in the same spot over and over and over again so it's not going to give you anything more or less um, this is a problem that has been weighing down the AW world and the AW team world mostly so when people were still new and they didn't know how to build yet um, these mistakes were easily made and people would just sometimes mass select everything um, they wouldn't remember that they actually mass select everything and they would just paste it in the exact same um, spot so that explains what Z buffering is now we'll be taking a look at exactly what the cell is um, but before we're going to do that I'll just quickly explain the geometry of, uh, of active volts in the engine itself so like I said my friend was building a, a nice space station underneath the water um, in one of these worlds in active volts and he was told a, a story that he, he was not allowed to use a skybox basically that he had blown up using the scale command now what scale does is with scale you can set a, a bigger scale so let's just uh, 
let's just do it right here. Let's just set a scale of 10 in this case. Does it do that? No, it doesn't understand it. All right, so let's just blow it up in every direction. Does it do that? Uh, it's probably not working because maybe I need to use the create. There we go. So basically he used the scale command to make the skybox big and to put it around his entire lot. Um, if it's a simple cube, what it will do is it will render this 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 one side, and if it's a, if it's a cube, it will render six sides. Um, and these six sides, so four sides from each direction and the top and the bottom, it will render these four sides, and then it will put the texture on these sides. Now, if it's a single texture, what he did, he used a single texture. It will only need to render these textures maybe four, in this case, six times because he said he has six sides. Now thing about it is that he was told it would take more performance out of older computers if he would use um, a singular object instead of, uh, in this case, you had to use many, many objects. Well, that of course doesn't make any sense. So if you would use multiple objects, let's just, um, let's just down the scale. If you would use multiple objects, all of a sudden it doesn't need to render it maybe six times. No, all of a sudden it has to render it, let's just do go okay. we need to get to the same well roughly the same size as we, as we were just now so let's just go ahead and just do that it's probably a little bit too high so let me just go ahead and delete that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna <laughs> talk about that just now so let me just go ahead and create Alright, uh, skill, let's just blow it up 10, 10, 10, there we go, so now we have something that is equally as big, hopefully, let's just go ahead and just put this down, alright, alright, so, do I have any objects left, I do, alright, alright, so, in this case, it would have to render the image once, if he would do it on, on the way he's doing it now because he was told to, he has to render that same image 25 times. Now, of course, you don't need to be a wish genius. If you need to render something 25 times or only once, what do you think is going to cost more performance? It's in active volts, it's just the same in the real life with other games. It will take, of course, a lot more performance. Um, if it needs to render that multiple, no, multiple times. Now, if, if you do have a complex geometry, say, for instance, a statue or maybe even a car or something really complex, and it's usually probably COB or, or, or dot .x or something exotic like that, then sure, you know, um, yeah, definitely. You know, that, that could definitely take more performance. But in this case, we're talking about a simple cube object, right? Only needs to render six, six sides, right? So there's no need to say, okay, you know, you have a giant cube, it's going to suck the performance out of old machines. That is a complete cockamamie story. That, that's just not true. It's not the way the engine works. Um, so, yeah, there you go. You only need uh, to render it once, uh, or in this case, six times, instead of 2,500 million times. So it, it does uh, boost the performance overall, especially on lower machines. If you only have to do things once, um, yeah, I mean... Let's just do, you know, it just it only has to do it once. I, I just can't believe the, the advice that was given. All right. But anyway, is that out of the way? I'll explain exactly what this whole cell grip thing is. Because we were just talking about um, Excel and other programs. Well, in Excel, you have two columns, right? So you have maybe an A column and a B column and a 1 and a 2 and a 3. Well, that's basically already a very simple array. You already have a few uh, columns, right? So A1, A2, A3, right? And this is exactly the same when you are using ActiveVault software. When you are placing objects, now this is a version 3 prop dump. Of course, we can always take a look at a version um, 5, uh, version 5 prop dump, but we'll just be taking a look at the uh, property dump of a, of a world. And in this case, we have the person who built it, we have a specific string and a specific value. Um, I think this is the actual um, grid coordinates. Um, then you have something called the, I 
think this is this is not the altitude. This is something else. This is the what is this again? Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Thinking. 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 Was this the altitude? No, 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 it wasn't. This was the well. In any case, you get the drift. So you you get <laughs> in your cell. You will see in your prop dumps when you actually do it, uh, a safe prop dump of your current um, world. You'll get a similar structure to this. Now this again is just a bunch of coordinates where the where the object is, what the orientation is, and eventually what the object type is, and usually behind it the action. So in this case. It's a RWX, and behind it, it will say, okay, which which action it has. Now, in these version five ones, there will, there might be different types of it because you might not just have an object here; you might have a zone here or, or something else. But we're taking a look at a version three prop dump because it's just a lot easier to work with. With the version five, it's just going to add more stuff to it and just going to cause more confusion. Um, but it's basically saving these objects in an array, and this array can then be read uh, by the world server and we're just going to take a look at a five here and this world server then translates all these coordinates into its cell structure so when it then renders or well tells the browser where things are they actually display where they are now i've noticed a few problems with version 5 worlds where it doesn't display the object ever placing it and then when you restart the browser it sometimes shows it or sometimes doesn't i think that has to do with the specific um, bandwidth that the world actually has to offer, so the, basically the connection, right? Because it's, uh, I think it's MySQL now, so it might just um, be dependent on that, and it just doesn't load the yeah, um, coordinates fast enough for the browser to respond. So, if it's a large amount of stuff and you see objects disappear, then yeah, now you know why. So this is great color. There you go. So all of these things are just basically uh, uh, values, right? We can't see them, but in this case, I'll tell you, these are values, null, 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 null. And then we got some more stuff, and then we got here a bell, and then here, a, these are just values, right? Now, because it's in, it's probably encrypted or something uh, by default, um, Notepad++ can still translate it pretty well. So we have a, a zero value, zero value, zero value, um, then we have something that says, okay, it needs to go here, zero, 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 then it says, hey, you need to go there, zero, 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 and it says you need to go there. So it does still give you that that representative value of where things go when you're in your server. So when you are um, more interested in, hey, how does the world server work? Um, this is a basic representation of a prop dump in action. So this is basically when you load a prop dump of a version 5 into a version 5 world server, um, this is probably what it will look like once you are done loading it all. Um, this is your cell. So AWS underscore cell is the file name. Um, so yeah, there you go. So that's that's basically what cell is and what it does and, and how that works. Uh, now. The important thing to note here is that the more stuff you have in a singular cell, the harder it is for the world server to translate that back to the browser. So if you have a huge world with lots and lots of stuff in the same coordinates like we just had, it's not just going to make it hard on the browser to render, it's also going to be hard for the world server to handle that because the world server has to um, translate all of these coordinates back to the browser and if it doesn't receive uh, certain um, acknowledgements back, it will just time out and it will just not load whatever's there. So you have to keep that in mind. You have to, you want to keep it, um, yeah. Um, of course, the less objects there are, the faster it's going to be. Not just on the performance of the browser, but also on the performance of the world server. Because like I said, it has to translate everything back to you. So let's just go ahead and delete that because we're basically done with that. Um, yeah, and that's basically Z buffering and um, the cell. Uh, so yeah, so if you are working with active worlds and you are scaling objects up, as long as it's not a complex geometry, you're gonna be all right because the complex geometry, of course, is gonna have, um, you know, it's gonna take a while for your browser to understand, and then it has to blow it up. And let's just be honest. If it's complex geometry, sure, you know, you might want to use a bit more objects, but it, it, that's really case specific. Most of the time, just using a scale, right, just blowing the object up, especially if it's simple geometry or just RWX, you're not going to see any performance difference, um, or well, you would see a, a performance difference uh, if you would oppose to use 
a huge amount of objects uh, because like I said then it has to render the same texture 20 times 30 times and then it has to place the objects at those specific spots and yeah it makes sense that it then costs you more performance um, so yeah there you go even all the video cards with texture units they're still gonna have the same problem all right so if people say oh you know I have an ancient ancient video card that doesn't have shaders you know one with texture units and uh, lighting units and uh, <laughs> you know stuff like that still the same case you're still gonna have more problems if you wanna have more objects and more services for it to have actually have to render all right so less services less stuff to render more performance more services more stuff to render less performance it's 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 simple stuff right here it's that's it's just just logic right if you have more work to do it's it's gonna take you longer it's gonna you know it's gonna drain your frames so that's basically that uh, explained um, if there is any questions about performance you can always just go ahead and um, leave a comment below the um, there is a funny thing about performance when it comes to visibility um, if there's too much uh, being rendered, of course, it's going to slow your browser down. I have the 500 meters tweak that I showed in one of the videos. Um, yeah, if you're uh, in a very heavily populated area, um, active volts might give you an out of memory, even though you still have memory left. I've seen that bug sometimes. Um, so, yeah, there you go. I think it's a, a, a memory limit of 1.7 gig, uh, but I'm not quite sure. I think that might have to do with the 32 bit architecture that I'm currently on but I might have to run some bug tests on that so if there's any questions let me know uh, comment below if you want to see something specifically be, uh, be talked about um, yeah just let me know and I see you guys next time